Hey guys, I wanted to go over what supplies you're going to need to do this project. And this is a little bit of a complicated one, but if we want our masks to actually be effective, this is what we're going to have to do. I have been playing with this stuff for days, trying to figure out the best way to make it work. And I really believe that each thing I'm going to tell you here is absolutely essential. So every tutorial is going to tell you that you need some fabric. Um, and really the recommendation is to use 100% cotton because we don't know how these masks are going to be sterilized. Some of them are going to probably be washed in the healthcare workers' homes. Some of them may be autoclaved. Some people are able to use some kind of UV light. So we want to make sure that we're not putting anything in the fabric like a polymer or polyester or anything like that that is going to react with any of the detergents. So 100% cotton is going to be your best bet on fabric. You want to try to go with something with a little bit of a tighter weave. Don't go for anything really loose or porous. You want to get something kind of standard or tighter if possible. The other thing you're going to need is elastic. So you want to get a braided elastic if possible. You want it to be strong and stretchy. Um, you can kind of pull on it. See that this has got some strength to it. There's certain elastics out there that when you pull on them, they just sort of stay stretched out and that's not what you want. You want something that's really gonna make a good seal here. Most of the tutorials are gonna tell you to try to use a quarter inch if you can. I had a really hard time finding quarter inch and because we are not making ear loops on our mask, it's okay to use half inch. I wouldn't go any bigger than half an inch and ideally I would use quarter inch if you can uh, or three eighths of an inch, but this will work it's gonna be one of the most important parts of our masks. So I know my first picture actually had bias tape in it, but I figured out that ribbon works a little bit better for this. This is used when we do the foam part for the nose piece. Something strong like this is good, maybe a woven one. Um, you can use bias tape, but you need a wider one. So it needs to be able to unfold or be at least three quarters of an inch thick so that you can sew on both sides to hold your nose piece in place. We also need some kind of rubber foam. I got this at Home Depot. It was about $2.25 for this package. And this is gonna go on the nose of the mask to make a better seal so that our masks are a little bit more effective. I was looking for a quarter inch, but they didn't have it. So I got 3 eighths of an inch by 3 sixteenths of an inch uh, rubber foam, and that's gonna go sewn into the top of our mask. You also need some kind of wire. So I have been experimenting a lot with these different wires. I like this floral gauge one. I got a 20 gauge wire. I also got a thinner one that I can use too if I run out of this one, but this one's a little bit stronger. Um, these packs of wire I was able to get at Walmart. I think it was less than a dollar for 30 pieces. You're also gonna need thread. You can match the thread to your material or you can use a contrasting one. I'm gonna use a contrasting one for the purposes of demonstration so you can see where my lines are being sewn. But when you're actually making these masks, I'd probably get one that's trying to close to whatever color that you have. Any good seamstress knows you need fabric scissors, which are only for cutting your fabric. And you need the other scissors for cutting all your other materials. I don't know about you guys, but if we touch my mom's sewing scissors when we were kids, we were in a lot of trouble. So keep your sewing scissors for your fabric and keep your other scissors for your other materials. When you're cutting the floral wire, you can either use kind of industrial style, style scissors or you can use wire cutters, whatever you have around. Both of them will work. If you use these kind of scissors or a pair of scissors that's kind of just regular, you may have to bend it back and forth a little bit to get it to break and that's okay. Once you break it, you're also gonna need to have pliers so that we can uh, squeeze off the ends so that we don't have sharp edges. You're also gonna need a tape measure because it's gonna be important that we measure these things out kind of accurately. You also are gonna need a sewing machine. You don't have to have a sewing machine to help with this project. There is a lot of cutting and bending and other things involved in it, but somebody who is working on these masks is gonna to have to have a sewing machine. So if there are people who wanna help and don't have a sewing machine, find somebody who does that you can work with from a distance or else somebody within your own home, there definitely will need to be somebody who is an experienced seamstress or tailor who can actually do the sewing part. This is the most important part of what we need here. And this is called the filtrette, um, which is by 3M, which is also a company that makes a lot of N95s. And what we need is an air filter. And you wanna get the biggest one possible because the pricing on these actually goes by the filtration level not by how big they are. So we're gonna cut this up into pieces, so we wanna get the biggest size possible. I got the 20 by 25 by one, which is pretty big, but there are bigger versions available. There is a 20 by 30. 
So I've ordered those. They're coming in from an online site. So hopefully I'm going to get a lot more filters pretty soon. You need to get something that is either a 1500 filtration level or a 2200 filtration level. So they have all these different types of filtrets and the only ones that get viruses are are the purple one right here and you can see that gets bacteria and viruses and then the blue one which is what I got which is the elite which does bacteria viruses cough sneeze debris and then it also does candle soot PM 2.5 air pollution and exhaust particles you don't have to get the blue you can definitely get the purple but I would recommend one of those two and that also has this accordion shape to it anything less than that like the orange level is not going to be useful it doesn't give you enough and it doesn't filter viral particles i compared them and i'll show them to you also but you absolutely need these gloves when i tried to do this the first time i poked myself so many times i was bleeding all over the place and we definitely don't want to give our healthcare workers masks full of our blood so these kind of gloves something leather is an absolute must okay so that's it that's our breakdown on supplies so basically we have our fabric which comes out to about 43 cents per mask We've got these two six by nine filters, which depending on your size, what I did cost about 95 cents per mask. Then we have 36 inches of elastic, which is about 75 cents per mask. Six inches of floral wire, which is about a penny. Six inches of the foam, which is about 11 cents. Seven inches of ribbon, which is about 13 cents. And so that brings us to a grand total of 238 per mask. I know that costs a little bit more than some of the others that people are doing with just plain cotton or maybe some hair ties or things like that that they're using. But these masks are very different in design. I can't say that they're going to save lives because I really don't know it. And obviously what we really want would be a real N95. But if we get down to the point that we're doing homemade masks and that's what our healthcare workers are using or that's what people who are sick in the community are using, then we want to do it in the best way possible and give ourselves the best chance of not contracting this virus. So I am hoping that this design does that. I obviously cannot guarantee that, but I'm really hopeful and I am going to get working on the video tutorial for you guys. Can't wait to show it to you. Thanks for all your help.